Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of That's a Wrap. I'm riding solo today to bring you my official review of the animated film Batman the Killing Joke. It's finally here. Does it live up to the hype? Well, we're going to get right into that. I'm your host, Aaron. You know me as Caboose XBL. I'm very appropriately wearing this Joker shirt today and maybe a little inappropriately wearing this Robin hat. But today what we're going to be talking about is the latest installment in the DC animated films, Batman the Killing Joke. Now, right before we get into the film review, I got to see this film in theaters from a special screening that a lot of theaters are holding in Canada and the US. So I got to see this film in theaters and right before the movie started, there was actually this very nice, well put together 15 minute documentary style piece about Mark Hamill and its comeuppance and how he got the role of the Joker. And it was really nice to see that. It was really cool to see Mark Hamill talking about this role and talking about he almost kind of didn't want to do this role initially, but once he got that role, you can tell he loves being the Joker and he seems like he's not ready to quit. He was originally saying he was gonna quit, but it seems like he just loves this role too much. So that was really great to see and it got me very excited to finally see another performance of the Joker by Mark Hamill and what can I say? What else can I say that you probably haven't already heard about Mark Hamill as the Joker and Kevin Conroy as Batman? It was so great. It was such a treat seeing these two guys interacting once again as Batman and the Joker. Now granted, we did get Hamill and Conroy as Batman and Joker in Arkham Knight last year, but the thing is, of course, you know what was going on with the Joker in that story, so you didn't really get much interaction between Batman and the Joker. It was more Joker taunting Batman and then Conroy performing as Batman throughout that story. What you get in The Killing Joke, though, is that interaction between Batman and the Joker, the back and forth, the banter. It's great. It's so good to finally see these two characters interacting again. And it brought the nostalgia for me. I know I'm still young, but it brought me nostalgia from back in the days watching Batman the Animated Series. In fact, in that documentary short, they showed some clips from Batman the Animated Series and seeing that on the big screen, oh my goodness, my heart, you know, like it brought me right back to my childhood. But yeah, Kevin Conroy, Mark Hamill, those dudes, I cannot praise them enough. They're both going to be at Fan Expo Canada this September, and I'm praying to the almighty DC gods that I'm going to be able to meet them because that will be one of the shining moments of my life. But what else can I talk about this movie? Well, it opens up with this kind of 30-minute prologue, and the prologue is, for the most part, about Barbara Gordon, Batgirl. Now, there's something that happens in this prologue that's very controversial, and I get that it's controversial. For me... It was very weird. I'm sure some of you know what it is, but I won't spoil it just for some of you who might not, just so that you can see it and interpret it in your own way. But for me, this thing was very weird to see and it was so like out of left field, you know, something I would have never expected, but there was a lot of build up to it. So I guess you could say that you kind of expect it and see it coming, but at the same time, it's just, it's a very out of character moment and it's something that I feel ripped me out of the film you know I was immersed and I was ready to go I was watching this film and I was like excited because of the action and everything but then this moment happens and I got ripped out I was like what you know it, it's that kind of moment it's very weird I'll let you see it for yourself and interpret it for yourself but it is a very weird moment and I get the controversy that surrounds it Besides that, the prologue is very good though. It's filled with action. You get tons of great moments and Batgirl kicks some ass in it. And I get why they did the whole prologue as a whole. They want you to kind of get more connected to the character of Barbara Gordon, AKA Batgirl, after you end up finding out what happens to her through the story of The Killing Joke, as most of you know. So I get why they did the prologue. It was well done for the most part. There's just a very weird moment that kind of ripped me out of the film. Now, after that, after that prologue, we get into the killing joke. And for the most part, this animated film pretty much adapts one-to-one -one the comic book of the killing joke. Now, some people had a problem with that from what I saw on Twitter. I don't really. You know, the killing joke is known as one of the greatest comic books of all time. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it was still great to see, even though it's a one-to-one -one adaptation, all those comic book panels being put into motion with the phenomenal voice acting of Kevin Conroy as Batman and Mark Hamill as Joker. We got to see a lot of the Joker's 
quote unquote past and we got to see some of his quote unquote origins and it was really well played out we got to see the ideologies of batman and the joker and how they're for the most part like they're they're two sides of the same coin you know and and they play that very well in this film a lot of the dialogue between the joker and batman and a lot of the things that the joker says you're like holy crap he's right you know as much as he is insane and psychotic some of the things that he says is right but at the same time Batman is Batman and he knows what he's talking about and he counters and some of the things that Batman say you're like yes that's what Batman would say that's what he would do when his back is against the wall and that is again a huge testament to the performances of Hamill and Conroy the animation in this film top freaking notch I mean how could it not be it's done by Bruce Tim of course bring me back to some more nostalgia from the animated series as he did that as well but yeah even some of the 3d animation is very well done it's very well put together it doesn't get overused you know obviously some of the car chases and everything like that they use that 3d animation and it's very well done it's not overused and it's not out of place and it doesn't feel awkward compared to some of the 2d animation i'm glad that they added it in there and bruce tim's animation overall i can't complain that dude is a master artist so my, uh, my hat's off to you, Bruce Tim. Uh, but overall, Batman the Killing Joke, I definitely say it's worth seeing. I have some gripes with it. It does get boring at times. It does slow down. But overall, it's filled with action. It'll keep you watching. It'll keep you on the edge of your seat until the credits roll. And with all that said, let me know what you guys thought of Batman the Killing Joke. If you've seen it, in the comment section below. I'm going to give Batman the Killing Joke a 7.5 out of 10. I'm Caboose XBL. Please... Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter and like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Leave a comment if you have an opinion. And subscribe if you're new. That's a wrap.